You're listening to Puma Podcast. Where the Island Passage is considered the center of the center of marine biodiversity, not just in the Philippines, but in the whole world. So it hosts thousands of fish species and other uh, marine resources na kailangan talagang we have to protect and conserve. Hi! Ako si Trisha Aquino, Puma Podcast. You're listening to Teka Teka News. Kailan lang napag-usapan natin ang pagbawas sa huli ng mga mangingisda sa Batangas City kung saan naroon ang lima sa pitong liquefied natural gas terminal projects ng bansa. Pero dala rin ng mga LNG projects na to ang trabaho at infrastructure sa mga naturang komunidad. At syempre, kuryente para sa ating mga Pilipino. Sa episode na to, ituloy natin ang usapan. How do these energy projects impact our environment? At kuryente nga ba para sa lahat? Did you know that the Amazon of the Oceans is located in the Philippines? That's the Verde Island Passage. We already heard about its rich marine biodiversity from Attorney Gloria Estenzo Ramos at the start of the episode. She's the Vice President of Oceana Philippines, an organization that's dedicated to protecting and restoring the oceans. And here's Professor J.B. Sako of Batangas State University. He's the president of the Philippine Association of Marine Science. Dito yung naging pinaka main concentration ng marine shore sa buong mundo. Shore fish simply means the fish that's near the shore, hindi yung nasa ilalim ng dagat. Ang pinakamaganda with this concept is that ano yung pinaka key um, important habitats of this marine shore fish dito sa VIP no. So syempre nandiyan yung mangrove ecosystem, sea grass and seaweed ecosystem and even the coral reef. Conservation International describes the Verde Island Passage or VIP as being the home of quote unquote charismatic species like whale sharks, sea turtles and an impressive array of corals. Madalas din may nadidiskubring bagong species sa yamang tubig na to. Kaya napakahalaga niya sa scientific community, hindi lang dito sa Pilipinas kundi sa buong mundo. So important is it that the Department of Environment and Natural Resources wants it to be a legislated protected area. Supporting the DENR's call are the governors of at least two of the five provinces surrounding it, Marinduque and Batangas, where the energy projects we mentioned earlier are located. Malamang alam nyo na kung saan papunta ang kwento. Environmental advocates are warning that what the government sees as a solution to our energy security concerns would cause an irreversible impact on the VIP. Actually, siguro yung ibang tao sasabihin, ang lawak naman ng VIP, bakit naman, or why are they concentrating or blaming others that they are putting industrial zone here, no? Yes, malawak nga siya, but the greatest um, vulnerability among marine ecosystem are coastal areas. Once mabago yung topografiya ng isang area, mababago na rin yung hydrodynamics. May iba na rin yung galaw ng alon, galaw ng current sa ilalim. And once you've changed coastal ecosystem, that will have escalating effect sa open water and even sa deep water. So whatever you're doing in the coastal area will have a major effect on open water. No? So, kahit sabihin nila na napakalawak ng VIP, but one of the vulnerable area in VIP are coastal ecosystem because nandito rin yung mga tao, nandito rin, usually sa coastal area din naman nangingisda ang mga tao. So, if you're going to change something within the coastal area, that will have a great impact. Kasabihin nila na- Proponents of gas projects may have good analysis of potential adverse impacts and they may even have mitigation measures. But Prof. JB says that they should realize that the marine environment has no boundaries. Quote, It's a continuous dynamic of different ecosystems, from mangrove, seagrass, seaweed bed, then corals. 
So even if only one ocean circulation or one reef pattern will be changed, everything will be changed, end quote. So for example, um, in Verde Island, no? may isang area doon naglagay ng isang port. So it's a solid port um, seaward. So meaning, niblock na itong area na ito, ito yung coast area. No? Pansin nung yung mga tao nandun, bakit yung concentration ng sand is nandito sa kabilang side? Because dinideflect na nito yung um, supposedly na dapat kung wala tong blockage, normal yung daloy ng tubig. So since binablock na nito, so ang tendency, lahat ng deposit ng sand nandito na sa kabila. So what if nandun yung mataas sa concentration ng coral reef? So pinatay mo na siya because of the sedimentation. So that's one example of disrupting hydrodynamics. Ito pa ang isa niyang paalala. When damaged, corals could take a long time to recover. Hindi daw ito parang houseplant na itatanim mo lang at aalagaan, tutubo na. We might not be seeing these disruptions, but they are happening. Prof. JV acknowledges that industrialization comes with negative impacts. Pero ang kiling niya sa mga pribadong kumpanya, baka naman kayang pagsabayin ang business sustainability at social responsibility. It's always a balance of everything. But if you compromise environment, that will be something different. And baka hindi na makita ng mga anak natin or apo natin yung mga organism na nasa dagat. Ayon sa mga pag-aaral nila, quote-unquote, good pa naman daw ang coral cover sa VIP. And Prof. JB thinks this is because of the LGU's sense of ownership of the place. He named Lobo, Nasugbu, and Kalatagan as among these communities, all in Batangas, which really strive to protect the waters. Pero bumalik tayo sa Barangay Ilihan kung saan natin sinimulan ang series na to. Kasama ang Philippine Center for Investigative Journalism o PCIJ. Again, it's been 20 years since the Ilihan Power Plant began operating. May import facility para sa LNG at isa pang power plant na tinatayo. Nang kumustay ng PCIJ kay Gilbert Cepillo, ang barangay chairman ng Ilihan, ang pangingisda sa lugar. Na wala na dynamite fishing kaya yung mga isda dyan, marami na ngayon sila dyan, hindi na sila naalis. Yung mga corals naman, hindi na nababasag. Nabanggit ng mga kapitbahay at ilang barangay official na nagtatrabaho si Cepillo sa Ilihan Power Plant bilang operator. Tinanong siya kung may epekto ang energy facilities na malapit sa marine sanctuary. Naririn nga lang sila at uh, sila'y nabubuhay di yan dahil nga wala namang gasi, ano ang epekto ng, ano, ng planta, wala namang gasino. Wala namang polluted na uh, na makapagbibigay sila para sila ay umalis sa isang lugar. Pero parang agree naman ang lahat tungkol sa isang bagay. That there has been at least one casualty and human at that. Two men, a fisherman and a diver, were swallowed more than a decade apart by the water intake system of the power plant. Yung isa nag-survive, yung isa sadly namatay siya. Yan si Cherry Salazar isang multimedia reporter ng PCIJ. Narinig nyo na rin siya noong huling episode. Ang kwento sa kanya ni Nanding Dakis na head ng isang asosasyon ng mga mangingisda at water treatment operator din sa Ilihan Power Plant na mamana o nagsispear fishing daw ang biktima habang naka-air compressor. Siguro raw habang papalapit siya sa water intake system, naubusan siya ng hangin at hinimatay, saka nahigop pa loob. Yung diver naman, part ng isang corals monitoring team. He was able to escape. Sabi ni Nanding, nalingat lang siya kaya siya nahigop. Nalaman namin na hindi rin naman pala talaga kaiba or hindi ganun ka-unique yung ganitong mga incidents when it comes to power facilities. Yung power infrastructures or power structures kasi, kaya sila kadalasan nasa may coastal areas Kasi yung buong proseso niya at pag-operation niya, nagre-rely siya sa water intake to cool down the system. Tapos saka sila nagre-release ulit ng water doon sa pinanggalingan niya, doon sa may coasts. And so, Cherry reviewed the environmental impact statements of the two power facilities being constructed in Barangay Ilihan. Baka kasi mangyari pa ito ulit. Yung isa sa kanila acknowledged 
na mayroong mga ganong incidents and they said lalagyan nila ng parang screen para maiwasan yung mga ganong pangyayari, mga ganyan. Cherry is referring to Atlantic Gulf and Pacific Company, the parent company of Linseed Field Corp. It's building a floating storage and inland regasification units for LNG here. Their intake mechanism would be designed to be, quote, big enough that the water flow will be very slow. That will reduce the risk of getting sucked in the pipe, end quote. Yung isa naman, they said definitely na magkakaroon ng mga health and safety briefing, na better condition sa area, pero walang specific mention doon sa ganong incident. The other one Cherry's referring to is Excellent Energy Resources, Inc., which is building an LNG-fired power plant. EERI is a subsidiary of San Miguel Global Power Holdings. In October, organizations working for the protection of VIP filed complaints against Linseed and EERI before the DNR for supposedly violating environmental laws. But back to the risks to people's health and safety. Isa dyan yung dust emission dahil sa construction. So, expected naman yun na medyo maalikabok or sa term nila doon, gabok, yung area dahil sa construction. Halimbawa, may isa kaming local officer ng DNR na nakausap. Sinabi niya na ang mitigation para sa dust emission, simple lang naman talaga. Regular lang na water spraying. Pero kahit yung simple na yon nami-miss pa rin ng project proponents. In fact, yung katabi ng barangay Ilihan na barangay, yung barangay de La Paz, yung border kasi nila, doon nakatayo yung isang power facility na itinatayo ngayon. Nagre-reklamo yung mga residente doon sa Alikabok o doon sa Gabok. Yung isang nakausap namin na asawa ng manginista, isa rin siyang barangay health worker, sinabi niya sa amin na tumaas yung cases ng mga may asthma doon sa barangay nila. So, ina-attribute niya yon doon sa Alikabok dahil sa construction activities. Yung iba parang nagre-red yung ice nila or nangangate. The book also affects their harvest. Yung community na yon, isa siya sa parang suppliers ng atis talaga sa palengke before. Pero ngayon, sa kwento nila, dahil sa gabok, parang nagkakasakit o nangingitim yung mga atis, yung mga saging. So, affected na rin yung extra income sana nila doon. In another area in Barangay Santa Clara, near the first-gen energy complex with its four power plants and an import facility under construction, the problem is water. Meron silang tinatawag na ilog kabubulag. Yung mga residente ng Santa Clara also told us na affected din yung iniinom nilang tubig. Kasi ang nangyayari, parang nagko-compete sila sa water intake ng mga infra na nandun. So, kung dati daw gahita yung lumalabas na tubig, ngayon kailangan na nilang maglagay ng parang hose para lang meron silang makuha. So, natatakot sila na darating yung panahon na kung dati binibigay na ng kalikasan yung mga ganun pangangailangan nila, ngayon kailangan na nilang maglabas pa ng pera for it. Naliligo rin at nagsiswimming ang mga residente sa mga yamang tubig na to. Pero ang iba ngayon, nangangate at nagkakarashes na raw. Si Ricky Carandang na first gen told us na lagi naman silang compliant based sa monitoring nila at nakikipag-ugnayan naman din daw sila doon sa communities. Meron daw silang quarterly meetings with them. PCIJ also tried to talk to other project proponents, but it was only first gen who responded to their calls and letters. Speaking of water, the think tank Center for Environment, Ecology, and Development has been looking at water quality in towns along the Verde Island Passage since 2015. In its report last year, it said it found excessive concentrations of phosphate, chromium, total copper, and lead along the coasts of barangays Ilihan and De La Paz. Binisita rin natin ang barangay De La Paz nung huling episode. Sa Batangas Bay naman, nagsample sila ng tubig at nakita na base sa standards ng GNR, hindi ito maaaring makategorize na Class SC o, quote, conducive for propagation of fish and other aquatic resources, commercial and sustenance fishing, wildlife sanctuaries, and recreational activities, end quote.
At this point in the episode, we already have a pretty good idea of what these energy projects mean for the environment, as well as for the people's health and safety. Pero balikan natin ang layunin ng mga proyektong ito. Kuryente. Ito si Bibiano Mendoza. Isa siyang mangingisda na taga Barangay Santa Clara. Apat na natural gas-fired power plants ang nakapalibot sa lugar nila. Wala, wala ko rin dito. Kailan lang naman ditong solar eh. Noong una may wala dito ko rin dito. Katawin dito, noong 2000 nag, nag ginawa, eh kami hindi binibigyan ng kuryente. Ay, di, asa lang kami noong una. Eh, ang aming ilaw yung sa gas. Eh, ngayon, solar na. Santa Clara residents have yet to be connected to power lines due to a land dispute. And that was today's episode of Teka Teka News. This was the second of a series on energy transition, the communities affected by it, and what it takes for us to be able to have power in our homes. We'll get into our country's energy demand and situate it in the global context in the next episode. Again, I'm Trisha Aquino, Puma Podcast. This episode was produced by myself. It was co-written with Cherry Salazar and Elisa Lopez of the Philippine Center for Investigative Journalism. Bitin sa kwento? Check out the articles, infographics, and pictures of these communities and the fishermen who live here on their website. That's pcij.org. This episode was edited by Pidoy Blanco. Follow Teka Teka News wherever you listen to podcasts, including YouTube. Thanks for listening.